Chopin's Etude Opus 10 Number 3 is all about legato, and it can be tricky for small hands because sometimes the hand has to reach for a faraway note while it's holding another one down. So the most important principle for this one is if you can't hold on, let go. Now of course you can use legato pedaling sometimes to help you smooth those gaps, and you should, but I also really truly believe that the main game of this piece, besides voicing, is about playing legato without the pedal. So I encourage you to practice with as little pedal as you can possibly stand. If you look at Chopin's pedal markings, you might be surprised to see that they're more sparse than you might think, and that can be really interesting. So take a look at the pedal markings, use as little pedal as you can, but then anytime you need to use the pedal to connect a note, of course you do it with a clear conscience. I'm going to show you a couple of places where you can sometimes take one note from one hand into another hand, and I hope you'll find those useful. It's also interesting that Chopin's tempo marking is andante ma non troppo, which means walking speed but not too much, so not too slow, and that his metronome marking is 100. I challenge you to try practicing this piece at Chopin's metronome marking. It's probably much, much faster than you think, but it actually allows the line to go really beautifully through the whole phrase. It doesn't always work in concert, but you can sort of decide, depending on how you feel about the piano and the hall and the audience and the day, if you want to do something faster or more slower and kind of luxurious, which is what the way most people play it. You will need to use the pedal to connect notes you just can't reach. While you're practicing, you want to let go of everything you can't hold on to. For example, in measure three, you can just let that right hand C sharp go. and hold it with the pedal. Also, at the beginning of that measure, it's easier if you let go of that low G sharp in the right hand, so you can let the hand close to reach the A. You'll find lots of other places where that principle applies. Just let go of anything you can't hold on to. Sometimes you can let one hand help the other hand, but your addition might not show you. In measure eight, the left hand can take those A naturals so the right hand doesn't have to play a ninth. Sometimes it's easier to play the same finger on successive notes. In measure 17 to 19, the right hand can play 555 to go from the long note to the ones after it. I'll show you just the top voice there. It's five, 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 five. Then in measure 20, it's helpful to take the last B with the right thumb, not two, so you can close your hand and have better control over the grace notes into measure 21. When you get to the dancey part at measure 22, don't work to make those staccato left hand notes legato. And don't stretch to reach them. Instead, bounce and rotate and pivot with your whole arm. And make sure you let go of the notes after you play them. I think Chopin put those staccato notes in to remind you to let go instead of holding on. But what you really probably want to know about is these sixths at measure 21 going into 22. If you try to play them with a typical hand, they're going to feel really awful if your hand is small. But if you let your hand go into some strange shapes like the one-eared llama, it becomes possible. 
The one-eared llama is a hand position that might seem sort of strange, but can actually be really, really useful and helpful. So if you imagine that your hand and your arm are a llama, here's two-eared llama, hello, with this being the body, and this being the neck, and this being the head, ears, nose, mouth, the distance between the ear and the nose is actually really far, and if you let your hand close, it can help you find the shape that you need. So just to really show you the difference between what's possible with a flat hand stretching and what's possible with a one-eared llama, this is about as far as I can stretch my fourth finger and fifth finger apart. And it doesn't feel great, and it's not that far. So if I take this distance, and then I turn my other hand into a one-eared llama, look at how much farther I can reach between five and four. And of course it's true in both hands. So the one-eared llama reminds us that we are three-dimensional creatures and that we're going to sometimes need strange hand positions that are not just your typical one, two, three, four, five position, but that you can find the comfortable position that will let you get to where you need to go. So when we play these sixths, the llama idea is helpful because the second finger and the thumb need to be kind of on the same team. And sometimes the fourth finger might even need to be on that team. So instead of doing it this way, where the fourth finger is on the team with the pinky, see everybody's kind of in their own space, we're doing this way, I'm turning. It's not all the way llama, but just possibility of llama. And so we have this, which is much, much, much easier to do this way than this way. In measure 32, practice those pairs as four note chords, then rotate them. So this becomes this. So you'll practice. And then you can enjoy the symmetrical rotation. So both hands are out and both hands are in. And then both hands are in and both hands are out. So out, in, in, out, out, in in, out. When you're practicing the chord, chord, chord version, you want to find the most comfortable hand position for each one. Don't let any of them feel awkward or strained. They might look a little odd, but find the comfortable place. In measure 38, look for comfortable hand positions for all those tritones. And don't try to connect all the notes in all the lines. You'll make a better legato effect if you connect just the outside lines and let the inner lines be short. In measures 43 and 45, some of these positions in the right hand with the middle notes going to different places within the octave may feel strange. The way that I would recommend practicing that is leave your second finger and your third finger down on the E and the F sharp, and then do just the octave, making sure that you release and get comfortable in between every single one. So not hold, everything move, hold, everything move, no, that won't work, but if you do And if that's difficult, you can even do so you just play it with the thumbs and then once that's comfortable then you can add the pinky in for the full octave. In the cascade at measure 46, you need to find comfortable hand positions so you can enjoy the symmetrical motion of the rotation. A high wrist helps here. It's easier than and rotating is key, so going this way to here. Flexibility is really important, and I think one of the most important things that this piece can actually teach us here, it's all about flexibility. This really requires a supple hand. So don't hold on to all the notes you're not playing. If I go from here, everybody else is comfortable and fluid until we get to here instead of playing here and everybody's rigid getting to here. 
the one-eared llama really helps here. So you start out with llama, and it's not complete llama. The fourth and third fingers are not all the way over with the second finger, but they're also not over here kind of trying to help out the fifth finger. The fifth finger is really on his own and everybody else is coming this way. So you start with llama or possibility of llama and then you fold in and by the way when you do that make sure that you don't keep everybody stiff. So if we have llama and everybody's stiff and everybody's stiff and everybody moves together stiff, that is a miserable experience. But if you can play everybody who's not playing, and by everybody here I mean the fingers, so we have non-playing fingers supple, and only the second finger is supporting everybody. Everybody else is loose and free as we come to fold in. Also, to connect each pair, don't try to play the outside notes legato. I really find that that doesn't work with a small hand. Instead, connect the inside first note to the outside second note and let your hand close comfortably to the next chord. And then it reverses, so you have the first outside note awkward and this is a good reminder that the perfect hand position is the one that lets you get to the next one easily and freely. So use the pedal to connect the notes you need to hold and change hands where you need to and play as legato as you can and make sure you're always moving from comfortable position to comfortable position. Enjoy Opus 10 number three and get in touch if you have any questions and good luck!